It is fall 2017, and I am sad and I'm struggling to get through each day. I am still in shock, but it's been two weeks and I'm craving some normalcy, so I decide that it's time to go back to work, go to a volunteer board meeting, have some friends over to help me eat the pastas and the soups and the lasagnas that are filling my fridge. And every morning I wake up and it takes me a second to realize that this wasn't a bad dream. This is my life now. On August 21st, my boyfriend Zane died suddenly. My grinning brown-eyed boyfriend is gone in an instant and with him vanishes the vision of the life I thought I would have. One early October evening, I get home from work and I call Barb, Zane's mom, who I have been talking to every day since he died. Tonight is no exception. Barb tells me about her day and then she says, Danny and I are gonna run a half marathon in March just before Zane's birthday. Without thinking, I say, I'll do it too. Barb is giving me the chance to achieve a goal that Zane no longer can, running a half marathon before his 30th birthday. Never mind that I am not really a runner. I wanna honor Zane, and this seems like the kind of goal that will help get me out of the house during what I know is gonna be a hard winter. So when Barb says, are you sure? I say, of course, I would love to. I'm not really sure that I'd love to, but I know that I need to. So when I start training in early January, I realize I haven't really run regularly since one season of high school cross country an entire decade before. I also have never run more than about four miles. So that first week of training, I run three times and I can't believe I have to do this over and over again for the next two and a half months. <laughs> Zane and I used to sometimes go for short runs around our neighborhood, just occasionally, and I would always be struggling to keep up. And he'd be telling me, you're doing a great job. I was not doing a great job. <laughs> but he always believed in me more than I did in myself. When I'm running and training, I find it easier to think about Zane than when I'm still. So I let my mind wander and I think about how he would be so surprised that I was training for a half marathon after I had repeatedly told him I would definitely be cheering him on from the sidelines. I think about how he brought me coffee in bed every morning and the names he suggested for our cat, Gordito, Maverick, Pancakes, before finally suggesting the winning name, Sherlock. Before Zane died, I had started having some lower back pain, and then after he died, it got a lot worse. So around the time I start training, I also start physical therapy for my back. Physical therapy really helps, and I do the exercises religiously, but still, my back hurts so much, and sometimes for the first mile or two of a run, I have to do back bends and stretches and hunch over and wait for the muscles in my back to loosen up so that I can run without pain. I am not sure how I'm gonna do this, honestly. It takes me so long to run five, six miles. I don't know how I'm gonna do 13.1. I keep getting blisters, my back hurts, I kind of hate running. <laughs> and honestly, I am still just so sad. But uh, I know that even if I'm the last person to cross the finish line, I need to do this. Zane was the kind of person who went to every birthday party he was invited to, even if he barely knew the person, because he didn't want anyone to be alone on their birthday. He helped friends move, and he canvassed for candidates he cared about, he volunteered at a domestic violence shelter in college. He was the kind of person who you could count on, who showed up and was a great friend, and I know that even if it kills me, I have said I'm gonna do this, and so I'm gonna do it for him. So race weekend rolls around and I get to Colorado a few days early to get used to the altitude. We're running a race that happens to be in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is where Zane went to college. It is so weird to be in a place that he spent so much time without him. The day before the race, 
his mom, his brother Danny, some friends and I are walking around downtown and we go into a coffee shop that's owned now by a college friend of his. And I am hit by this intense wave of sadness that I am here in this place that he will never get to see. The next day is the race and I am <laughs> incredibly nervous. But there are 15 of us on the starting line who are all wearing matching shirts because we're all there to run for Zane. We have his name on our green shirts. It's his mom, his brother, his cousins, his friend from grad school, his brother's friends. And there's five or six more people there to cheer us on um, because they were not foolish enough <laughs> to say they would run 13.1 miles. So we start off strong. Barb and I are running together. Pretty quickly, we fall towards the back of the pack. We are uh, just sort of, sometimes we're in front, sometimes we're behind this mom pushing her toddler daughter in a stroller. Sometimes the toddler gets out of the stroller <laughs> to run <laughs> alongside her mom. And still, <laughs> we are barely keeping pace. <laughs> But you know, we're, we're moving. The race is an out and a back, and we're a couple miles from the end, and I am just, like, I am not sure I can do this. I am now farther than any of my training runs have taken me, and I am pretty sure that my feet are probably just entirely blisters. I have a stitch in my side. I feel lightheaded from the altitude. I think I'm gonna throw up. Like, it is horrible, but you know, I am so close, I know I cannot stop now. And so slowly I keep going with Barb cheering me on every step of the way, just like Zane would have, telling me, you can do this, you're doing great. We round the corner of the parking lot where the finish line is, and everyone who came to run the race with us has formed a tunnel with their hands up in the air right before the finish line. And Barb and I hold hands and we run through the tunnel. And I've never felt more like I was in a movie than in that moment. <laughs> we cross the finish line and I am just so relieved. <laughs> I did it. I ran 13.1 miles. <laughs> I feel changed, but this time I feel changed by my own hard work and, uh, and decisions instead of grief and loss. That was five years ago, and I told myself that I never had to run again if I didn't want to, much less 13.1 miles. But the joke was kind of on me because I ran a 10K later that spring here in DC with a friend. The next year, I ran two half marathons in the same month. <laughs> And I have kept running since. I've run 10 milers and 5Ks, and I keep trying to get stronger and faster. And that race turned me into a runner. Before Zane died, I didn't think of myself as a particularly strong person. But running that race and losing Zane transformed my view of myself physically and emotionally. And now I know that I truly can get through anything, one step at a time. Thank <laughs> you.